Segments from Life in the Arts can now be viewed on demand on YouTube.com. Just go to YouTube.com, add slash longtimers, and that will take you to our YouTube channel. Welcome to another edition of Life in the Arts Classic Light, the art enrichment program featuring art lessons, virtual field trips, artists from the past, student films, and performing artists. On today's broadcast, Making Your Own Flag. A lesson presented by artist, designer, and teacher, to show you Jamie DiDigi. And a virtual field trip to visit the moving installation piece by Kathleen Cruschetti, Counting Lives Lost. And now, Jamie DiDigian. Hi, welcome to Life in the Arts. Today we're going to talk about symbols and flags. Specifically, we're going to create our own personal symbol and um, incorporate that into a flag that we make. We'll choose color and maybe some other symbols, put them all together to come up with something that represents us as individuals. So first of all, we'll talk about uh, what symbols are. Symbols are uh, pictures that uh, represent an idea or a thing, and they've been with us for uh, many, many years. Uh, back at the caves, as a matter of fact, they were pictographs, and they were the basis of writing when they represented ideas and helped people communicate. Flags came about probably a little, little later when people became uh, organized into different groups or different uh, um, cities or towns and clans. Cities and towns came later, of course, but the, uh, this is a way for people to identify who they were affiliated with, and, and, um, and this is a way to show your symbols, is to put it on a flag. So we're going to combine those two things today and hopefully come up with something that represents you as an individual. You can do this with your classmates or with your family. and. Um, learn a lot about how to make symbols and how to make these things work together and hopefully have some fun. So first I'd like to show you uh, just quickly some different flags here and these of course are not all the flags that we have um, to look at worldwide certainly but these are some national flags and I just want to give you a sense of some of the things that are done in flags. You can see a lot of horizontal stripes, stripes going horizontally and also some vertical stripes and some triangular shapes there are some uh, illustrations of things in the center. You have uh, small graphics here. You have symbols and things that are even pictures that are quite detailed. This is actually an eagle. It's probably hard to see. An eagle holding a snake. It's on the flag of Mexico. And here's a maple leaf on the flag of Canada. So you can see that there are a great many things that we can do to incorporate symbols that may represent literally or figuratively uh, what we want to communicate to other people when they look at our, our flag. So today we're going to try to come up with an idea that will work and represent us as uh, the people that we are, the unique individuals that we are. All right, um, today's lesson basically um, has two parts, and we'll start with part one, of course. And part one uh, has to do with coming up with a symbol and making a flag. And I will tell you about part two when we get there. Okay, so we'll start first of all with, um, hopefully you all have some white paper. We can use some uh, white paper, or uh, it doesn't have to be real good paper, but something that we can use to put down the different colors and shapes and forms as we cut them out and come up with them. Um, so I'm going to uh, tear off a piece of white paper first. I'm actually going to use that, the first one, to uh, come up with my ideas. And then I'll use a second sheet of white paper as the uh, sort of the basis of my flag. And I'll, I'll put my colored shapes onto that when we're done. So the first step, of course, would be to come up with um, ideas. That's often the hardest part. And uh, when you design or make artwork of any kind, uh, the ideas are really the thing that um, set your work apart from um, your neighbors or your classmates. And um, those are the things that represent who you are and how you see the world. So uh, I realize it's probably tough to come up with ideas that uh, represent who you are. Uh, symbols especially, it seems like a very important thing, but we'll, we'll give it our best shot. So I'll help you out by uh, coming up with some ideas that might represent me and I'll tell you a little bit about um, my thoughts when I'm doing that. So the first step is to use pencil and paper, good old fashioned pencil and paper, and we can make a list. And um, you don't have to write things down as, as words necessarily, though I think it helps, helps for me. You can also come up with uh, shapes and uh, doodles, anything that helps you come up with an idea. 
So I'm going to start out by making a list here of some things that, that uh, have to do with me and my creation. First thing that I'm going to talk about is I like, um, let me see, I like animals. So I'm going to write animals down. And I, these aren't in any particular order. They're just going to help me uh, come up with um, some pieces that I can put together in some way to, to communicate what it is that, that uh, may help me develop my symbol. Okay, so I've got animals here now, and I've got um, airplanes. I like airplanes. My father was a pilot, and my grandfather was a pilot. So I'm going to do that. And they don't all have to be words that begin with an A. <laughs> I like, um, I like uh, the outdoors. I like artwork. And... Um, let me see. I like different shapes and forms. I'm just attracted to what they are, but that doesn't mean that I have to put them down. I like triangles, circles, things that um, have that kind of movement associated with them, that kind of look to them. Uh, these are the building blocks of different symbols and forms. Um, I like all kinds of different things. Uh, let's see. See? I've caught myself. This is hard. It's, it's not an easy thing to do, but you've got to go through this process first. So. Uh, let me see, I've got a few other things to work, work on here. Um, I can just jump right ahead into colors since that's uh, coming to my mind right now. So let's say uh, blue. Blue is a favorite color. And I'm not so worried about why. We can talk about that a little bit later when I make some choices. Green's a favorite color of mine. I like uh, reds and oranges. Uh, let me see, what else? Oh, I could keep going. Um, I think I have a pretty good basis here. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop with this list where it is now and see if I can come up with something from this list that will help me get started in creating my symbol. Uh, and I sort of jumped right into this and made a longer list. Uh, it might take you some more time to do that. That's perfectly OK. And even as you're working, if you come up with a different idea, that's OK too. Explore that. So now I'm looking back at my list here, and I'm going to determine what it is that um, works best for me. I really like the um, animals. Since, since that came to mind first, I think that's probably a stronger association I have. Uh, I like the animals, and I want to see if I can do something with the an animals there. Airplanes, well, um, maybe, maybe not. The outdoors, well, that encompasses animals, doesn't it? A animals are part of the outdoors, so maybe I don't have to do something separate that represents my, my love of the outdoors. Uh, artwork, I think um, that would be hard to represent in a symbol. You've got to remember that a symbol is often something that we want to have be, to be uh, somehow more simplified than, than a detailed drawing of a thing, especially since we're going to cut them out later. You don't want to have all these little things to cut out, just the shape, shape of the form to suggest its meaning. Okay, So um, perhaps I can pick some of these shapes. I really like the triangle, and I also like the circle. It's hard for me to choose between the two, so uh, I'm just going to try to come up with an, a solution that will work on one or the other, and I'll pick it as I go. I'll, I'll take a look at that a little later. Um, I like the blue and the green. I'm going to pick one of these. Let's go with the, um, the blue. I always like the blue. So I'm going to pick the blue, and I'm going to try to work with the red and orange, something to go with it so we don't have just one color on our flag. Okay, so I've got animals, blue, red, and orange, and I'll see if I can come up with something that'll work. Okay, so that'll be the first first process that we want to go through and make sure that we have everything down. Now, the second thing we want to do is um, once we, we've, well, actually, I did do the second thing. I chose what I wanted to um, follow through with and refine and begin to draw. So step two would be to choosing, which we've already done here. Now, I think step three would be to begin to draw these things and to refine our images. So I'm going to just start with some simple shapes to see if I can come up with something. It'll be more difficult to draw a bird flying, so I'm going to try to draw a bird that's perched. And I'm just going to start by making a couple of shapes. I'm making an oval. I'm going round and round over this oval like this to come up with a basic shape for the body. And then up here, I'm going to draw something that resembles a circle in much the same way. And that will be the head eventually. I'm not worried about all the little details. I'm just going to um, you know, block in these shapes and forms so that when I uh, finish up this shape, it will look something like a bird. So this will be the head, and this will be the body. Now I can begin to kind of maybe bring what will be the feathers out from this body. And then I can come up here and join these things. You can see I'm making progressively stronger lines and darker marks as I begin to finish 
the image of my bird. Now I'm going to come down here. It's beginning to look like a dove, actually. And I'm going to finish up the shape of the bird. Oh, can you see the bird in that so far? And now I'm going to come draw the beak. Now remember, just do your best. It's not uh, important that it looks just like a bird. And hopefully you're drawing something other than a bird, but you're using my technique. You're using this simple shape technique to draw a reasonably simple outline, but somewhat accurate outline of the object you're going to use as your symbol. So I've got my bird in here, and I don't know whether or not I'll put an eye in in the finished bird, but um, right now I think the bird should have an eye. So I'm going to put an eye in there, and maybe one line that suggests the detail, that suggests the wing. OK, that's the bird's body. Now, it's got to be able to stand since I don't have him flying. So I'm going to come in here and draw the feet, OK? So now I have an outline of a bird, and I'm going to draw the feet, right? One thing I realize here is that for my flag, for the size of my paper, I've probably drawn this too big. So I can quickly draw a smaller version for myself to show you the next technique. Um, you may want to consider how big you want your bird to be. Oh, hey, I can even leave this bird the way it is. I might draw a real smaller one here. I'm going to do that really quickly. So I'm just going to draw a smaller bird. Again, the same basic technique. Really, this is key on how to draw, whether you're doing things that are symbolic or for flags. I found it very helpful to use your whole arm in drawing and to just carve out with a pencil. Be generous. Don't worry about the extra marks. See how many marks I make here. Just be generous with it and end up drawing a shape that's going to work well for you. Be sure of it and, and just carve it out with the pencil once you're done. You want a softer pencil, like a number two pencil, and they even make um, better pencils for drawing, these kinds of things. I'm going to do a little bit of erasing because I've got too many marks there. There, that's a little better for what I'm going to do the size of my bird. And then I'm going to make his feet, bring it back. So that's my bird. Now you may say, well, what if I don't want a white bird? What if I want to, to uh, change this bird and do something different? do him in a different color. You know, we are going to use the construction paper later. Well, I'll show you a technique for transferring this drawing of the bird onto the colored paper so that when you cut it out, you can have a colored bird instead of a, a uh, sketched drawing of a bird on white paper to use for your flag. OK, so now I've drawn the main symbol that I want to have in my flag. The other symbols that I'm going to use really, I think, will be more uh, what we call geometric, shapes that are made of triangles, um, circles, rectangles, things of that sort. So uh, this is my main image that I'm going to use, and I'll go on from there. OK? So I'm going to put the bird aside for now. And I'm going to choose another piece of paper and start sketching, start, start sketching ideas for the flag itself. OK? Now, just as we were designing with our symbols, we need to design a basic flag shape. I'm going to use a rough sketch. Again, I, I can't tell you how important it is to just not be afraid to sketch your ideas out, whether or not you think you can draw well. Just go ahead and sketch that idea out. Now, I'm, I've got a few different rectangles, because I'm probably not going to come up with the best solution right away. I don't want to keep erasing. I want to just move on to another possible solution. And that's why I'm drawing a couple of different rectangles here. OK? I might not use all of them. Maybe I'll get lucky right here and, and uh, come up with a solution that works real well on the first panel that I've drawn here. This represents the outside edge of what will eventually be my flag. And again, I'm just kind of sketching here to come up with ideas. Now, I've got a bird, so I can probably place the bird in the center here somewhere. I know that. But I'm not going to worry so much about where the bird goes first in a relationship to my different edges here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out what I'm going to do with the rest of this, this um, image, the rest of this what we call the picture plane, the um, interior part of the page that represents the flag that I'm going to make here. What do I do with that? I went back to my list, and I had things on there, different colors. Now, um, I had on there blue, and I had on, I think I had orange. It really doesn't matter. I I'm going to use at least two colors at this point. So I want to figure out how to involve those colors into my flag. Um, and also, why I may choose blue and orange. Well, blue to me really represents 
I think nature, blue and green, those things in our culture represent nature. It also is calming. I think that's something um, I, I try to have involved in different parts of my life, is that sort of calming um, element of blue. And I just like the color. I like the way it looks. I mean, I don't even know why, uh, why I, I choose that color. And I, uh, I like clothes that are the color blue. But um, I've always liked it. So I'll use blue. And also, I want to pick something that works with it. Um, and I was thinking perhaps orange. Orange is what we call a complementary color to blue. And it actually is, um, if you ever uh, continue with artwork, you may study color theory and find out why those have a unique relationship of work together. But basically, we know that in certain situations, it works really well with the color blue. But orange can represent a bunch of other things that um, are, are not so similar to blue. Maybe energy, warmth, um, and also can, uh, can um, represent um, even gets close when it gets more like a red orange, it can represent uh, fire and, and um, sort of a desire to, to maybe to learn, or to do things, or, or to be assertive, whatever the case may be. It doesn't have to be an aggressive color, but I'll, I'll prefer orange, and I'm going to use orange with my blue today. Those will be the two colors, and those are the reasons why I think I'm going to choose those colors. So now back to my drawing. Um, I, can, I can involve them a couple different ways. So if we think of the stars and the stripes, like real quickly, I'm not telling you to draw the American flag here. You have, if you re remember or if you have a picture of it, you have alternating red and white stripes that run down this way, horizontally, across. You also have a, what we call a blue field in the upper left corner. And inside that blue, we have, I'm sure you all know that, stars. Now, here we have the blue with the red. That's similar to what I'm going to do, blue with the orange. They contrast together. They represent different things. But in, in the um, United States flag, the blue field here has these white stars. And each one of the white stars, um, they don't, though they don't look like a state, they represent all of the states. Each one represents an individual state, all the states in the Union. So all these stars represent something. They have a symbolic meaning here. I'm not going to put all 50 of them in there for you. But um, I'm not sure if you know this or not, the red and the white stripes, they represent the original colonies that were here in, in the beginning of what became the United States of America back on the East Coast. So. Hopefully, you'll have that in history if you've not already uh, discovered that and discussed that. Um, so again, there are reasons why those colors are there and why they occur in certain numbers in the flag that we're all familiar with. So now, I, that's a neat design, but I can't use it. It's already been used. So I'm going to move on and finish my blue flag here, So my blue and my orange flag. So in blue and orange, how can I involve these two colors in here? Well, I can divide it in half, one side being blue, the other being orange, or I could Maybe in this case, I'm going to erase it so I don't have to keep drawing or keep drawing on new, new fields. Or I could divide it in half that way. That's not as dynamic. That's not as interesting to me as to have this be divided in half this way. Uh, I could do it. I could make that work. But um, for some reason, it just doesn't have enough movement, enough interest. It's not compelling enough for me to just divide it one half blue, the other half orange. So I kind of like this division. Another division that I might consider would be something really a little crazier, a little more interesting, is I like this triangle shape. Remember I said that I like the triangle? To me, the triangle represents um, strength and stability. And also, it's something that if you study art history and um, the process of making art some more, you'll find out that the triangle is a very common element in composition, just the shape of where objects are placed in a picture or in a painting. And um, I've always been attracted to the shape of the triangle. So I may choose to do that, in which case I may say that out here might be blue. And in a similar way, out here might be blue. And the inside here might be orange. OK? Maybe that's something I can consider. So I've got two different um, ideas that are compelling to me here. I've got another one here. I could very simply keep all of the background one color. And perhaps I could use my other shape that I was interested in, my circle. and integrate the circle and have the interior of the circle be the other color. Maybe the flag is blue and the inside of the circle is orange. I could do that. And that involves my circle shape that has meaning to me. And the circle to me, unlike the triangle, it actually means continuity and cycles, rhythms. I like the completeness. There's no starting point and there's no stopping point. To me, it symbolizes uh, the continuation of things like learning and understanding about myself and, and people in my life. And, and, and all kinds of other things. So to me, the circle is really important. And I just think it's a very attractive shape. I've always liked the circle. So I may be able to incorporate a symbol by way of the color. And then somehow we'll figure out what we're going to do with our bird. 
In this case, the bird will probably go in the center of that circle. It doesn't have to, but it might. So maybe the bird will go here. I'm just doing a real, real rough little sketch of where the bird might be. Or maybe in the triangle flag, it'll go right here. Or possibly it'll go up here. Well, I'm going to go with this triangle shape. I'm going to do this. So the next step, of course, would be to start cutting out some paper and making a transfer of that bird. I will put the bird in black just, just because I think the black might stand out real nicely against the orange. I'll have the triangle be orange, and I will have this exterior part be blue. Okay? And I'm going to choose a couple of different colors. I'm going to choose an orange color, and I'm going to choose a blue color. But the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to incorporate that drawing of the bird. OK, I have to find my bird first here. I think I've got it on another page. Here he is. And I'm going to show you that technique first real quick. So if you've drawn a shape, you can very easily transfer it. As you come to think of it, I'm going to make him in blue because I don't have a piece of black paper here, and I like the blue just as well. So the first thing you're going to do is going to go to your blue, or, or sorry, you're going to go to your uh, drawing of your bird or the object that you've drawn, and you're going to locate it on your page. And then what I need you to do is flip the page over with a good idea of exactly where that bird is. Now, it happened to be on the back where all my list was. I don't need my list right now, so I'm going to just mark right over the top of that. Now, I just want to make sure I know where the bird is here. Then on the back side, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to hold it flat down so this side of the pencil can rub and put a nice even coat of graphite on the back of the drawing of the bird. And if I look very carefully, it'll be hard for you to see in the camera, very carefully I can see the imprint of where I drew the bird on the other side. Okay? Now, once that's done, I've got a generous coating of that graphite down. I can place the paper back right side up and um, position it on my, my colored sheet of paper. So I've got my drawing paper over my colored sheet of paper here. And then what I do is I use the pencil not to draw necessarily, but to press. I go back over with a fair amount of pressure the outline of my object. like that. And I come down here, draw his little feet. In this case, I'm not going to draw a lot of detail on it. And hopefully, I will have impressed a imprint of my bird onto my blue paper. It's really hard to see here. Perhaps I can move in on this here. and show you the bird. I don't know if you can see that, but here's the bird. Here's the bird shape. What that is is graphite that came from that back of the page when I scratched and made that impression. And by pressing down with my pencil on the drawing surface, I was able to, to transfer that graphite onto my blue colored paper. And that'll now enable me to cut it out and follow the line to my original drawing. So that's a pretty handy thing. OK, so now I'm going to use my scissor and cut my bird out. There we go. And there's a bird. Now you see that this bird is not, is not very detailed, but it shouldn't have to be. A symbol isn't always a detailed representation. So what I have to do now is I take this bird, and I'm going to place him on my ground, and I'm going to take the other color fields and put them together and make the flag. I really will just be basically cutting out shapes in orange and blue paper and making my flag. So I'll do that on my own, and you continue to work on your own and your flag. And when you've uh, got them in a position that you like, you glue them down, and then we can do the second part of our lesson. Part two of the lesson is, I think, an important part two. What you need to do is you need to discuss the symbols, and you need to share them with people, either your classmates or your uh, friends or your family even. And so what I want to have you do once you've finished your flags is to give them to your neighbor or a classmate or a family member and, and don't tell them where you came up with your ideas, the, the idea behind your symbols. Let them try to determine what it is you're trying to represent. And once they've, they've taken a guess and they've discussed it, then you switch back and tell them what your intention was. And that way you can talk about the symbols, their various meanings, and, and whether or not you were able to communicate what it was that was important to you and your symbols. So uh, hopefully that'll work for you and you'll enjoy that process. 
This concludes our lesson on symbols and flags for today. And I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, that you don't stop there and you continue to make flags and symbols and, and artwork. This installation is called Counting Lives Lost, Making Tangible an Abstract Measurement of Grief. And I decided I wanted to say a prayer and an apology for every person who we were responsible for killing in Iraq. And so I started making the Iraqi figures. And one of the things that was bothering me was that we called um, the Iraqi dead collateral damage. They, they aren't people, they don't have names and our government doesn't even keep track of how many have died. And for us, as just citizens, we hear on the media, oh, one American, 16 Iraqis, one American, 40 Iraqis. You know, like, there's this daily small number, but the whole picture is never put out there. And then, when a number gets to be a certain size, it's so big, it's just abstract. It's just a big number. So what I have is um, one three-dimensional figure for every American and I've taken a little four inch by six inch American flag and folded it in the traditional way and and one of the reasons I've done this is that I really want my piece to be respectful and honoring because Americans have died and there are people who who feel like this is a just endeavor and I want them to be able to approach my work and understand its meaning without putting them off for every American, conservatively, there have been 16 Iraqis. And so the Iraqis are represented by this little flat piece of clay that's basically a shadow of the American. And in my installation, there's one American and then 16 of these. I'm using um, IraqiBodyCount.com as, um, as my resource for the numbers of dead Iraqis. And on that particular, that particular research group requires three verifiable sources to count a person dead and our government um, agrees with their number so I don't want anyone to say I'm exaggerating it or making it worse than it is it's probably a really conservative number it went up on Memorial Day and we had 2465 dead Americans and 42,000 Iraqis and we're up to um, 40, 44,000 Iraqis and 2700 Americans Next time on Life in the Arts, a lesson in painting flowers big in the style of George O'Keefe. Artist Melissa Pickford dresses as George O'Keefe to get us all in the mood. Also, a virtual field trip to San Francisco to view an exhibit of paintings by George O'Keefe, presented by curator Tim Bergard. Segments from Life in the Arts can now be viewed on demand on YouTube.com. Just go to YouTube.com, add slash longtimers, and that will take you to our YouTube channel.